All right. Stop. Thank you. Okay. We're going to be in our engineering notebook. Uh, there's a couple things I need you to copy down to fix. So, uh, orthographic projection is the first thing I'm going to teach you. Uh, that's probably brand new to all of us. Um, it's a way of sketching and drawing. But it, it's actually accurate. Like, the measures are accurate. Uh, in orthographic projection, you will have to create an image that has your top, front, and right view. We don't do bottom. We... Uh, top, front, and right view of an object. Giselle, may I ask you to put away your phone, please? There is no reason why your phone should be out while I'm trying to teach orthographic projection. Thank you. Uh, right now, we're just listening. Giselle, did you get an engineering notebook on Friday? Are you here on Friday? I'm going to get my notebook now. All right. what? Your engineering notebook from Friday. Oh, yeah, now I remember. I was here. I told you. All right. Orthographic projection has three views. I'm hoping that on Friday, I give you the first test. Which uh, starts off with what I'm going to teach you today: orthographic projection. All right. Um. Here is an orthographic projection of an object. You have your front view, your top view, and your side view. And here we call it the right view. Okay. Now, from last week, we learned that these little dotted lines are called object lines can we stop talking okay the dark lines the dark lines are your uh i'm sorry no 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 wait my bad hold on my bad so the dotted lines are called your hidden lines and then these are called your object lines the dark lines are called object the dotted lines are called your hidden. These and these are called your center lines. Okay? You won't have to name them. You will have to use them appropriately when you sketch. So when you sketch, you will have to include some object lines, center lines, and hidden lines um, by Friday. Hidden. Okay, so what we're going to do together is we're going to copy down this orthographic projection. And as we're copying it down, I'm going to teach it to you. So you're not literally going to copy straight from this. Giselle, is your phone still out? What is that? All right. So what we need to do, I'm going to set it up. So I'll have both areas available to us. Drag it uh, right there. All right. Just like everybody else. Thank you. All right. So, engineering notebooks. Did I tell you to write your name on the binding yes. on Friday? So it would be a little bit easier for you to find it in the shell. All right. We are going to be on page 18. This is 143. On page 18. I love to see how you're visually doing exactly what I'm not. I should rephrase that. Are you refusing to do something I've asked you to do? I love doing what I'm not. So I'm asking you to do to turn to page 18, 143. All right. 143. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to create a coordinate.
coordinate plane, an xy. So create for me an xy coordinate plane on your paper. Cool. What's an xy coordinate coordinate? What does that mean? Just forget it. Yeah. Cool. Alright. Okay, so using a ruler, you're going to draw for me an X an XY coordinate plane like you would in math. So it's about the size of my palm here. And I'm not really measuring. So four, 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 four. Okay. So this is a coordinate plane that I need you to do on your paper. I've asked you to draw two lines, basically. Okay. Now, in an orthographic projection, this is our first orthographic projection, you will always have your front view in the, I'm sorry, your front view in the bottom left-hand corner, your right view on the bottom right-hand corner, and then your top view on the top left. You will always have it in this order. The number one thing I check on your test is did you label it correctly? Do you have the word right, front, and top on uh, in your uh, assignments? Okay? Top, front, and right. Your first test will involve orthographic projection. Your real first test. All right. So we are going to start off with my favorite which is the front view. Yes, it says right, right hand. All right, but you're also listening, so you hear it. Okay, so we're gonna do this section right here, which is your right view. So I'm gonna zoom it in. Your first drawing that you do, either the top, front, or right view, there's no real limitations. You just copy it and draw it. It's when you start doing the second and third drawing that there's more limitations that I will be grading you on. Francisco, can you sit for today right in that chair so you're facing forward? Not so Francisco right here. Me? Well, you're Francisco. <laughs> and I waited until you turned around to tell you where to sit just for today. Okay. All right, so we're literally going to copy this like L looking shape in your front view here. Okay, so I'm going to start off. Okay, so I'm going to start with this corner right here and it's two across. So I'm going to start it. I'm going to start it right here. And it's going to be two across. Okay, so here. Start it and then two over. Now I'm going to count to see how many boxes going straight down. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six lines going down. Six lines going down. So one, two, three, four, five, six. No, we're counting lines. No, we're counting lines. And then I believe it's nine going across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, nine going across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I'm right at the edge. And then I'm going to go up two, and then over, 
So here it's two, then I'm going to go up. One, two, three, four. All right, so you're sketching out your L shape. <coughs> now, do you guys see these little dotted lines right here that my mouse is kind of hovering over? So these are called hidden lines. There's two sets. There is a set right here and there's a set right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to include those in our sketch. So orthographic projection, there's two, first one, and then here. So these are called hidden lines. They're dotted and hidden. So you also need to include these two little tiny dotted lines in your L shape. All right, are we okay with the L shape? So this first one, like I said, you can draw it at any part of this quadrant. Um, and a coordinate plane has four quadrants. Quadrant one, two, three, four. We're used to graphing in this quadrant. Okay, so here, anywhere. It could have been higher, more to the left, more to the right, lower, cool. That's the first one. Now, from now on, everything's related, okay? So we're going to do the right view. Now, the right view, I can't just draw it anywhere. There's some limitations, okay? Oh, no. You look soft. Okay. okay, there's some limitations. So, this first part here, we're going to draw construction lines. <laughs> I don't know. Construction line here, draw an arrow. Okay, can we move on? I don't want to go address it over there, but I will. We're ready to move on. Okay, so here is a construction line going this way, and here is a construction line going this way. What are these construction lines mean? These are limitations. You can't draw below this arrow. You can't draw above this arrow. Your next drawing has to be somewhere in here because there's limitations. It has to be within this section that you drew your first L in, okay? So I draw these construction lines. What are construction lines? They're light lines, right? So these are construction lines. Somewhere in this space, I got to draw my right view. Now let's put your right view into... They drew them as yellow lines. The yellow lines are their construction lines. Okay. We got to draw this shape in this section right here in between the two arrows. So in between the two arrows, so Giselle, I need you to focus. I need you looking at where my fingers are, not down at your phone. So these two arrows tell you exactly where to draw this shape. You can't draw it above and you can't draw it below. You have to draw it in here. So let's copy this shape that we see on our screen into our notebook. So I'm gonna start off two, down one, over four, up one, over two. So this is how I first started. I'm not done, but it goes to show you how I started. So I, I kind of drew the top part right there, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. Go all the way to the other side. Count the boxes. Now, do you guys see these dark object lines there? I got to draw these dark object lines. There's one that goes straight across. What? And then there's two vertical lines here.
All right. Are we okay? All right. Now, now we had some limitations, right? Yeah. Now to do the top view, there's also limitations. Whatever you draw last will have so many limitations. The first set of limitations come from this view, which is just going straight up. Okay. So it has to go from this edge to this edge. Okay. I can't draw it on this side. I can't be drawing it on this side. It has to fit within these two arrows. When you take your test on this, the first thing I check to see is, okay, did you set your limitations? Did you set your arrows? If you draw it off center, it's completely wrong. So the first thing you have to do is understand the limitation. So limitations going this way and then limitations going up. Now, because we already have two drawings in two drawings already, we have to figure out one more set of limitations. Now, if I zoom out here, do you guys see all the yellow lines that are created in this quadrant one? So there's a lot going on here and I'll break it down for you. So it's pretty easy. What you first need to do is to graph the ordered pair one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, by five, so on and so forth. You need to graph these points. These points will create a straight diagonal line. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Wow. Um, get that? It's the rules of orthographic projection. So if I start at zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three. These are the rules for orthographic projection. So it's basically just go up one square over one, up one square over one, up one square over one. So do this here. You're going to need to do this every single time so the orthographic projection are lined up. The first thing I grade is did you label right, front, and top? The second thing I grade when you take the test is, did you line them up correctly? Even before I check to see if they're drawn correctly, is did you line them up? All right, are we okay? Did you do the one, one, two, two? This next part's kind of like, what's happening? It's not hard though. It's just, what in the world is she doing? Okay, you see how I drew these arrows over and over? So from the right view, you're gonna take the corners, okay? Take this corner. Construction line going straight up until you hit a dot. Hit a dot. Once you hit the dot, turn to the left and draw your arrow. Corner, straight up to the dot. Once you hit the dot, turn left, draw your arrow. This other corner, go straight up and hit, until you hit a dot. Miss Lamelli, don't hit a dot. We'll add more dots. Go straight up with the construction line until you hit a dot. Then turn left and draw an arrow. All the way up. You feel free to use a ruler to make sure like, okay, am I hitting the right dot? Okay, I am. Am I going over? Okay. So you have all these, all of these construction lines there. They're there to guide you to make sure that you put your orthographic drawing in the right spot. The top view in this case. Okay. So these arrows tell you where to draw your top view. This arrow here tells me, I, you don't have to do this. You can't draw anywhere here. This top arrow tells me I can't draw anything up here. You don't have to do the shading. The shading is kind of just illustrating. You have to draw in between this. And if you did it correctly, this is the only space you need. Okay? So how did I get this arrow? From this corner, straight up to the dot, then turn left. From this corner, straight up, then turn left. Okay? Are you ready? Okay, now we're gonna copy this shape into your top view. <laughs> this like C looking shape right in here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just like the bottom. So I have to start it right here. I have to start it with these two arrows meet. Mine actually meet at the, at the Y. So here, 
and I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It should be perfect. If you did it correctly, it should go from arrow to arrow. Then you're gonna go up three. One, two, three. I'm gonna do this in color so you guys can see my drawing. Three. And then I go up to where this arrow basically is. All the way over. Down three. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. obviously you don't want to do this in pen because if you make a mistake you erase i did it in color so you can see because mine ends up being on the line which i don't like but whatever you're gonna draw your object lines object lines there so make sure you're staying with us so you don't have to borrow your neighbor's paper and he, then they fall behind all because you were off task. All right, we ready? No. Oh my God. So does yours look like mine, the screen? Yes. Oh my gosh, it's just the yellow lines are the construction lines that we did. Um, Can I have one person from your team, the guy that's done, come up? That two by two. Oh, right. All right, grandmother, we're going to get the two. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Oh, my, oh, my. You can do that after class. All right. What's that? Okay, so the reason we do orthographic projection is because it allows us to get the best shape and details of an object, fewest hidden lines, uh, natural position, and whatnot. So. You will be draw. You will be using a computer animated software that allows us to use to see front, top, right view. Now, let's pretend we are here standing in front of this building in downtown Santa Ana. Wow. Where's Santa? So, this is number one, two, three, four, and five. If I were standing in front of this building. Which number represents the front view of this building? What shape do I see if I'm standing in front of it? Oh, no. Two, two, two. What do you see? Three. Three. 
The correct answer is two. two. So you see this L shape right here. That's represented by this L shape. Now the big rectangle here as a solid is this big rectangle here. This extra space that you see here is this extra space there. So that would be your front view. Your front view is the view like if you were a little human standing in front of it. Now, can anybody recognize what would be my top view of the same building? So your top view is, have you ever been to Google Maps or Maps on your phone? And every building looks like a rectangle type of thing. So which would be your top view? That, that number one is the number one language. Like, uh, uh, five is incorrect. It's amazing what you can do with writing down the shapes. Number six. One. What do you have for math? So I'll let her know that you can't count numbers. Three. All right. What? What is X? Oh, I know it's four. It's four. 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 Oh. Five. X. Oh. Excuse me, Mark. Yeah. X. Your top view yeah. with this extra long piece, that's this extra long piece. That's so cool. as a top view, you would see it that way. Um, your right view is number one. Your right view is number one. Here's an example of an orthographic projection, similar to what we did, but this one has a circle, which I'll be teaching you how to draw circles in orthographic projection. All right, so what I need you to do is to open up your packet to page two. Okay. On page two, you have in the middle, isometric drawings and on the right side orthographic projections and we must match i will do the first one with you please pay attention now to help you better understand we're going to start with the top view my top view i am going to color in red So if I was in a helicopter or looking on my phone on maps, I would just be seeing the color red, the top, like the rooftop of this building. It kind of looks like a letter C. What? Now, in letter A, this drawing will always be your top view. Now, the red, does it match this shape as my flat top red, yes. I, my, as my roof? Yes. yes. Right? This line right here signifies this line right here. And it's overall AC. Now I'm going to color my right view. If I were standing on the right side of the building, what kind of shape is that? An L. And then this right here will always be my right view. Does this, okay, you need to watch the screen. Nothing on your neighbor's face is going to be on this paper. Nothing on your lap is going to be on this paper. So when the teacher looks up and you're looking at your neighbor, 100% you're not paying attention. When I look up and you're looking at your lap because your phone's on your lap, you're not paying attention. Okay? You're going to be loose on your own on a graded assignment in five minutes. You need to learn. You're not experts yet. You need to be paying attention. Yes. So do you see this L shape? Does it match this L shape? Yeah. So, so far the top view matches the top view. The right view matches the right view. Now the front view is this part, the blue part. If you were standing in, in front of the building, you would see this blue part and only the blue part. Okay. Does A match the blue part? No. 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 What is missing? It's supposed to be a little, like, a little curve at the top that goes down. Exactly, right. Modesto. Very good. I this cutout. Do you guys see this cutout? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Do you see the cutout here? No. No. Oh, it's missing. It's, it's missing. So that's why this first one is not letter A because it's supposed to have a cutout right there, but it has no cutout here. So number one is not letter A. Now, give you guys a couple seconds to figure out what does match number one. Look at the top view, look at the right view, look at the front view. Which one matches number one? A, B, C, D, or G? D does not match my top view. It's not a C. It's not a C. Okay. Your top view on E, is it the letter C? Looks like a C, right? This looks like a C from the top view. Your L. L is right there, right? Now, like Modesto said, does it have a cutout for the top for the yes. front view? Yes. So it matches all views. So the correct answer for number one would be the letter E. I think someone did not know how to grade. I don't even think they knew how to word or say together. All right. I want you to match the rest of these. What happened here? Okay. So, I, I, in my opinion, I would look at the top view and then go from there. Ready, set, go. Match them. Match them. I gave you the first one. You're on your own for the other one. You shouldn't really be copying what Miss Amelia already taught you. Now you're on your own doing them. Number one is E. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, 